So today I had the opportunity to sit down one on one with a man many call the smartest Republican in America. Former House Speaker Newt Gingrich was in Spokane to speak at the Healthcare Symposium for Inland Northwest Healthcare Services. Gingrich is well known here in Spokane for his commitment to health care and the fact he took the speaker's gavel from Spokane native Tom Foley, of course. And he has his own theories and ideas about what to do in Iraq, Iran, and his own political ambitions. Tonight, only on KXOY4, my exclusive interview with Newt Gingrich at the Davenport today, on the same day the U.S. announces it's bringing home 30,000 troops from Iraq by next summer. I, don't, I wonder, is that fast enough for the American people? I mean, the American people seem to want us out of Iraq now. Well, I, look, I think any rational person would like us to find a way to not have young Americans getting killed. Uh, the question is what the consequences are if we leave so precipitously that we create a vacuum and whether or not that means we have to go back in the region with even more forces in a more painful way in the next few years. And I think that the, uh, the challenge is to explain candidly to the American people how much bigger the, the larger war with the irreconcilable wing of Islam is and that Iraq is a very small part of that just as Afghanistan is a very small part of it. And I think, the, you know, I think the American people can be pretty mature if they have leadership. But I, I think this war has not been well explained. The context of it hasn't been well explained. And the threat uh, to our cities and to our population has not been well explained. And so you look at the carnage on, on the television, you say to yourself, I, that makes me feel bad, it makes me feel terrible for the families. Why do you think it hasn't been well explained? I mean, we've, we've been fighting for six years and talking for six years. I mean, where has this lack of communication, where did the communication between leadership and the American people break down? Well, I think in a lot of places. Uh, I, I think, first of all, from the very beginning after the attack of 9-11, uh, our political leadership in both parties and in the news media didn't want to be very vivid about what was going on. Uh, you know, it was overwhelmingly young Saudis who were killing Americans. Uh, it was overwhelmingly Saudi money that was paying for all of the spread of radicalism in the Sunni world. And it's Iranian money which has been paying for the, the spread of radicalism among the Shia. Are you suggesting then that this, the focus of this entire campaign needs to shift now? I'm, I'm suggesting that you couldn't have understood Gettysburg without the Civil War. You couldn't have understood Guadalcanal without the Second World War. Everything has to be seen as one large complex war in which Iraq is not very well managed. And, and I've said publicly, I, this is not armchair quarterbacking. In December of 2003, I went public and said we had gone off uh, a cliff in what happened in Iraq. And I, I, I think the administration mismanaged parts of the Iraq war. But what I'm, what I'm worried about is people who say, well, we can just legislate defeat for America. We can leave Iraq and there will be no costs. And if, if, if we are defeated publicly in a way that every terrorist on the planet can celebrate, then we have to assume they're going to have more energy and more recruits and the war is going to get, become more dangerous very fast. So I'm trying to figure out how you do this then. Uh, if, okay, let me pose the question to you this way. You're now in charge. What's our next step? I think the first step is you put enormous direct pressure on Iran to, to quit interfering. You tell the Saudis you're not going to tolerate them financing terrorism. And you tell the Syrians you're not going to allow them to have any more terrorists come through Syria to go to Iraq to kill Americans. And that you're prepared to do what it takes. Ronald Reagan replaced the dictatorship of Poland in an alliance with the Pope and the Prime Minister without firing a shot. We are the most powerful nation in history. The fact that we are tying our own hands, operating ineffectively, I think is very dangerous. We currently have two groups. Stay the course and let's legislate defeat so we can get it over with. We need a third course which is what is it, an honest national discussion. What is it going to take to defeat the irreconcilable wing of Islam before it gets nuclear or biological weapons and starts taking out Seattle? Do you think that taking out Osama bin Laden will be part of the solution, or is Absolutely. that... Absolutely. But why haven't... I mean, what's... Why? You're making my case. I mean, look, this, this is why I, I, I refuse to be put into a box that says, I'm either for what George W. Bush is doing, or I'm for an American defeat in Iraq.